Hello everyone, my name is Grant, or Stemage, from Metroid Metal. Uh, and I haven't done one of these before, but I thought I would do a little uh, sort of tutorial about what I use for drums in my Metroid Metal projects and my other projects. Um, I get questions on occasion about this, and I thought it might be helpful. You know, I, I've been using so many video tutorials recently from different people on the Reaper uh, doll, the Reaper software for recording. And um, for other things, uh, recently I thought it might be useful to someone who's using Reaper, is interested in MIDI drums, and is interested to know kind of what I use specifically, because I, th I think it's a little unconventional. It's probably not the best way to go about doing multi-sample drums, but it's what I'm used to. So I just thought I'd, I'd make this video. I hope it's helpful. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the basics of Reaper, because there are a lot of videos already available for that. Um, one channel you should check out if you're interested in learning more about Reaper as your recording software is Viking Guitars channel. He's working, he's, he just started a Kickstarter to uh, build a more fully fleshed out website with lots of tutorials uh, relating to music theory in addition to just home recording. So uh, there's a link to his channel there. For basics of Reaper, check his channel out. I'm going to do this with the assumption that you have Reaper installed. Um, you're kind of familiar with how it works, how the track timeline works, um, the concept of getting a basic track down. And then I use Battery for my sampler, or Battery from Native Instruments. I use Battery 3, which is the most recent one I upgraded. Uh, Battery 3 is a little expensive because now it includes a full package of drum sets to come with the software. So, so it makes it a little more expensive, but out of the box, it's already very, very useful if you're interested in trying this. So. Uh, again, check out Viking Guitars channel for the basics. I'm going to start this with the assumption that you have battery installed and that you're a little used to working in Reaper already. So uh, without further ado, uh, with the blank project I have here, uh, if you have battery installed, what you'd want to do is install that as an instrument in Reaper. So the way I would do that is right click on the track area and choose to install or insert a virtual instrument on a new track. And when I choose to do that, it's going to give me my list of my different um, my different instruments here. I'm going to choose battery 3 and when I click OK you're going to see this message come up. Now what this is is uh, battery you know at, at a very high level the way that any sampler works that's MIDI driven is you have a track that has MIDI data on it. It then sends that MIDI da data into your plugin into your instrument and that instrument then sends audio back out into Reaper. And it can do that in any number of ways. It's basically asking me if it wants to, if it wants to, if I want to use this number of uh, returns for audio. And I don't, I'm not going to use all these, but I do want these because what I'm going to do is bring back the the kick drum, the snare drum, the hats, the toms, all that stuff back into different tracks, and that will allow me to mix each of those instruments separately, which is very, very useful, and it allows me to do it inside of Reaper as opposed to trying to do that in Battery. So that's a that's the quick the quick version. I'm just going to click yes here. I want to create a new uh, a new track for every single return from battery. So click yes, and you're going to see this mountain of tracks show up on the left here. Um, I'm going to close down. This is what battery looks like. It basically looks like a drum machine. It's kind of what it is. So I'm just going to close this out. I'm going to close my effects window. And you'll see there's this giant stack of tracks that have been created uh, inside of Reaper. The first track is where my MIDI data would go. That MIDI data then sends into battery, and then battery returns all these different audio tracks. Um, what's listed here as master uh, is actually uh, returned one and two, channel one and two, one being left and two being right. And it's the same thing for the rest of these. Three and four, that's also stereo. Five and six, that's stereo. So I only need through like maybe 11 and 12. I don't really need anything past that. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna select 13, 14, scroll to the bottom here, shift click everything, delete them. Yeah, I wanna kill those tracks. So, so now I've got this little stack of tracks. Uh, now I'm gonna hold the control button and scroll and you're gonna, it's gonna kinda shrink everything up under here. So, so here's what we have. We've now installed battery into Reaper. Now the reason I did that by installing, uh, inserting a virtual instrument is because all the sends and all the returns, all the ins and outs are already set up for you. Battery, takes, battery and Reaper both take care of that for you. So you don't have to worry about trying to route this yourself. I, the whole concept of, of routing MIDI data confuses me. 
uh, to death. So it's nice that this will do it for you. So now we have an instance of battery installed in Reaper. So the way it does this is it installs it as an effect. So if I click on the effects button here, you're going to see it bring up battery. Battery is the only effect on this track. And this is what battery looks like. Like I said, it's just a set of drum pads. So here's, so this is, <laughs> this is blank slate, right? There's, there's nothing here. Um, battery is a pretty innovative interface. The interface is a little larger than it used to be, which is nice. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and get started adding some samples. I use the sample library from naturaldrum.com. It used to be called NS Kit uh, for Natural Studio Kit. I, it's like 20,000 drum samples. It's tons of samples. It's got, it's got you know all the drums with the snares on, with the snares off. It's just got tons and tons and tons of stuff in addition to other percussion. So here underneath um, the, the tab view, the pads, you've got these, you've got these, uh, these tabs here. And I'm going to go all the way to the right and choose Browser. And from here, I'm going to browse to the, my NSKit folder. So if I go down here to Recording, here is my NSKit folder. And like I said, there are you know, 20,000 some odd samples in the NSKit. And they have, a, they have pretty good naming conventions so you don't get lost. But if I, I'm going to click down in here under Samples. You can see here's all my symbols, hi-hats, kicks, percussions, snares, toms. So under kicks, here are the kick drums I have available. 14, 20, 20 punch, 22 boom. I like the punch kick a lot, so I'm going to choose the punch selection. It even gives you kick drums with the snares on and off, which is crazy. And for realism, I like always choosing the ones with the snares on, unless I would were to be playing another, another you know, kind of song where I w was you know playing with brushes on the snare or something so uh, I'm gonna choose 20 inch kick snare on and this is open and closed this has to do with whether the front heads on or off uh, normally in studio session you record with the uh, the front head off um, just so you have a nice flat sound to work with so I'm gonna click on open and this is all the samples just for that particular drum now the way this works is there are um, you can see it starts counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and as I click on these, you're going to start hearing the kick coming in. Now these are all different, different samples, uh, because the way this works is if you know if you if you only hit the kick lightly, you're going to want a light sample to trigger. If you hit the kick hard, you want a an intense kick drum sound to trigger. So all those are available here for both feet. That's the crazy thing. That's why there are so many. So you can see it goes up to 19, and then it starts over again. Letter B starts at 1, goes all the way to 26. So I'm guessing that's the right foot. So what I'm going to do is grab, start at 1 here, grab all of the samples that are here. You need a good bit of RAM to do this, because it's going to load all these in memory. Uh, and then I'm going to drag all these samples into the first pad that's here and drop it. All right. So now we have a pad that has all of these samples on this pad at the same time. If I click this pad, it's going to play all of them at the same time. All 26 kick drums. Ah, that's awesome. All 15 decibels of clip. That's what 26 kick drums sound like. So we don't want them all to play at the same time. We want them to be stacked. We want it so a, a low velocity uh, MIDI note will trigger you know, the one, the two, the three, the four, the five sample, and we want a uh, MIDI note of a high velocity to trigger one of the you know, 24, 25, 26. So what we have to do is stack these. So now that we have the, the, um, the kick drum on this sample, I'm going to go over to mapping. This is the mapping view, and you can see basically every one of these white squares represents a kick sample. right? On the left, you see here uh, numbers that range from 0 to 127. These are all of your velocities from 0 to 127. If you're familiar with MIDI, that's how it works. That's the velocities you have to work with, 0 to 127. So what I'm now going to do, you can see I can scroll around and see all the samples I've loaded in here. I'm going to right click on this area and click Stack Zones. What that's going to do is stack all these samples in sort of a stair-step fashion all the way from the first one to the last one here. So to, to test this out, you can actually hover your mouse over the velocity numbers 
and just start clicking around. So you can see the higher I, I click up on the uh, velocity scale, it's triggering different samples. And for realism, this is what you want. You can always trigger the same sample at a lower volume, but it just doesn't sound quite as realistic. And I, 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 try, to, I try to get realistic uh, sounds if I can. So there you go. Your kick drum's done. Let's do a snare real quick, uh, and then, we'll, then we'll, we'll time travel. So I'll go over here to the browser. Let's truncate all these menus. Now we're going to go into snares. A lot of snares. Oh, jungle piccolo bop. I don't know. Let's do like let's do the let's do a dead snare. Uh, there there are more options available for some of these snares than others, but uh, it's a it's a pretty awesome library. Let's go into the you know dead snare with sticks. Snare on. Looks like there's no there's no samples with the snare off for the dead snare. That's fine. Open this up. These are the different kinds of hits. You have to read the documentation of the natural drum software to know what these mean. But this is an ordinary hit. Um, you know, this is and this is like a roll and this is a rim shot, whatever. So ordinary hit. Here are all the drum samples for just this one drum, just this one hit. Again, the samples range from one all the way to thirty-three. Uh, and that's just for one hand. And then there are all the samples for the for the right hand, one through thirty-two. So let's do the left hand. We're gonna grab sample thirty-three here. Scroll up to the top. Select them all. Drag them all on top of here and drop them. And then I get to click this in here, thirty snare samples at once. Amazing. Actually doesn't sound that bad, but uh, that's every sample at one time. So now I'm going to hop over to mapping again. And you'll see here are all the snare samples together. I'm going to right click in this view, click stack zones, and it is now stacked all of these samples across all the velocities here. So I'm gonna, just going to show you what that sounds like. Ta-da! So now we got a kick and we got a snare. That's it. That's all you need. Uh, yeah, so when you click these, it, it, it auditions the high velocity uh, sample. And there are tons of other options in here. There are options for tuning. You can go in here and edit. Um, you can look at the cell. You can do all kinds of enveloping and compression and goodies. I tend to leave them raw in battery and then affect them later in Reaper. I just find that convenient or sonar as I did previously. So here we go. That's what they look like. So let's just like travel through time. Let's jump forward 10 years and show you what it looks like after you do this with everything. Uh, I'm going to open a recent kit. This is the last kit I used for the last Metroid Metal song. It's loading all the samples. Okay. Here we go. This is kind of what it looks like when you're done. You only really need to do this once, uh, and I imagine some, you know, some. Uh, there may be some people that have put together some, some, you know, some presets for battery, uh, so you can, you know, pull in all these samples ahead of time. This is just the kit that I like. So I've have two kick drums, two kicks, two snares, left and right, and then I've got two more snares for rim shots. Then I got two more snares for the rolls. Uh, I don't know what they call this technically, but it's just like where you kind of lay the stick down on the snare, right? And I normally mute this bad boy, but this is a good old fashioned snare roll, which just goes on forever uh, if you accidentally click it in the piano roll. So I just mute, I mute it because it just goes on forever until you stop it. And I'll talk more about how that works here in a minute. Two toms, two uh, two two ten inch toms, left hand, right hand, two twelve inches, fourteen, sixteen, and I got hi hats like crazy. I have completely closed left, completely closed right. Open a little bit, a little more, a little more, 
A little bit more of the open. And then a pedal. And then a pedal whoosh thing sound. Whatever that is. I don't know, but it's awesome. Whatever it is. Uh, and then I've got cymbals. I got rides. Ride crash. And then some cymbals. Ta-da. And that's kind of everything. Um, well, the only other thing I'll mention here is that uh, you have the ability in, in battery to set up choke groups, choke groups, which are very, very useful because it allows you to do things like make a snare roll stop when you hit another snare. Because realistically, that's what would happen, right? Um, what this looks like is if you go under setup, you'll see I have a, the choke group set to three for all the snares. So they will choke each other. Everything in, in, in uh, choke group three will choke each other. And you can choose the voice overlap, meaning that this is the number of milliseconds in between, um, you know, that the first sample will trail off before it stops. And so you want that overlap because realistically that's just how it sounds. Um, there you go. And it's the same for the uh, hi-hats. So obviously when you close a pedal, it's going to choke the whatever hi-hat sound you have. Uh, trailing off. Right. The voice overlap, 100, you know, 103. The choke group for all the hats are one. And then for cymbals, there's also uh, cymbal grabs too. Choke group two for the cymbals. So I thought I'd point that out because, you know, you'll start noticing when you're programming hi-hats like crazy, they're all flopping on top of each other and it gets confusing. You can also set max voices for a group. Uh, and this is because, you know, some of these symbol, some of these symbol samples would trail off forever. I mean, that's just how they work. Like some, some symbol samples are a minute long each. If, so if you hit a crash over and over and over and over, then it will all of a sudden, you know, start eating up. Uh, all this room in your memory because it's just playing tons and tons of samples at once. So you can choose how many max voices there are trailing off at any given time, which just saves on memory. So you're not, you know, by the time you hit, uh, you know, a, cra a crash symbol like, you know, 20 times in 40 seconds, it's they're all still playing, and you don't really need that. It's just not necessary. So you can choose, you can change max voices for that. Okay, so we're almost out of battery. Um, the other thing I'll mention is uh, outputs. So you'll notice as I'm clicking all this stuff, you can see the audio jumping on all these tracks that I've set up here. They're all different. They're all separate, different places. Bam. I'm not really using 11, 12, I guess. Snare stuff. So the way this works is if you go to the main cell view, over here on the output box, there is an area where you can select the, the output, right? So the way it's going to work is you go over to the kick, and you want that to output on 1 and 2, which is they just call master. So Then you have the snare output on 3 and 4, right? Because that's what we set up here. Then we have the toms on the next input or output. We have the hi-hats in a different place. I actually program, actually have the ride symbol on a different track than the symbols. It may not be necessary, but I like it. So I have the ride on its own track. So I am using 11.12. You can see it's set to 11.12. And, and then uh, the crashes are all set to output 9 and 10. So what that means is that one MIDI tra track can come in here but then all the outputs are out back to different tracks, so you can add effects to them separately, which is great. So I think that's pretty much it for battery. That's kind of a quick overview, but that's, a, that's an easy way to get set up. Um, it's a little time intensive if you don't have presets that you can get from someone else, but uh, it's worth it. So now we've got all this stuff set up. Now we can name our tracks. That's a kick. That's a snare. Them's toms. Those are hi-hats, those are cymbals, we have rides, great, all done. So now, um, you know, you can add effects to each of these separately, you can compress the kick separately, you can add your add verb to the snare, you can choke it, you can compress it, so it's pretty convenient to do this. 
So now that you have battery set up, um, there's a couple things you can do. One of the things I highly recommend is to select all of these items, right click, and then choose to save tracks as a template. And that means that at any point you want to recreate this exact setup, you can just right click in here, insert a track from a template, and then you can choose templates that you have already created, which is amazing. So as an example of that, uh, I'm going to show you how that looks because I've already set up delete. Oh no. Right click, insert track from template, drum temp drum template, and then it's going to load up. Battery, look at this, all done. I've got a master drums folder that holds all this stuff, so I'm just going to expand uh, this so you can see. But I've got the MIDI at the top, and I've got all the other stuff underneath. I've got a separate one for snare verb, that's not something I'm going to go into. But um, this is what they look like. The one thing I'll, I'll be sure to say is do not nestle these individual returns underneath the MIDI track. It won't work. Uh, you have to have everything that battery wants under another parent track for it to work correctly. So if I go into like the kick, for instance, you can click on the effects or roll over actually, and it will just tell you what I'm using um, in the effects chain for this stuff. So that here's some, here's some example of some effects I'm using and they're all different for all these tracks, which is super duper. Um, so there you go. That's, that's the setup. The next thing is to get some data in here so you can, you can, you know, you can actually trigger this stuff with MIDI. Um, the way you, I would go about that is to uh, go to the track that uh, you'll be putting MIDI data on, which is the one that says battery. There's different ways to do this. You can insert a MIDI item. You can hold down the Alt key or the Control key rather and just paint some MIDI data on here. Um, I'm just going to do that for now. So there's some there's some MIDI data. Um, I click all my drums in because I'm a doofus. Uh, so you know you guys may have a better way to do this controlling with a keyboard, MIDI trigger, what have you. So if I double click on this new MIDI data, you're going to get what's called the piano roll view. Oh, it's too big for my screen share here, so give me a second. You're going to get what's called the piano roll view. Uh, and this is what it looks like. Actually, let me close this. I'm going to make a new MIDI item so you can see kind of what this looks like first time you open it. This is what it looks like. It's completely blank. You got a piano on the left. Um, you can move this up and down. This is where you control notes and down here is where your velocities are. So, you know, piano is great, but I highly recommend going to the view menu and viewing uh, named notes instead. I learned all this from Viking Guitar, Viking Guitar You Rule. Um, and then, you know, you have all these numbers over here. Well, you know, it would be nice if these were actually named. So what you can do is, this is this is the most insane instruction I've ever received. Also, thank you, Viking Guitar. If you hold control and double right click, yeah, you can add names to these. Like, ugh. All right, and you got names here, which is really, really useful. So it says kick and snare and stuff like that. So let me go back to the other MIDI view. I, I wanted to show you that because I realized that the track that's here already has names on it, as you can see. Um, the one other thing I would do is, yes, let's see, but it's weird. It's actually putting names on top of the piano view, which is odd. So I'm going to click view. We're going to view named notes. And you can see here are all the names I have attached to the drums. The way I would know what these are called is just by clicking, right? I can click on the kick snare, trim shot, one, two, tom, 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 tom. So it takes a little bit of doing to figure out how they're organized and then naming them. And after you name them, you can click on view. You can, uh, let's see, what is it? Show and hide note rows. You see I've got some extraneous uh, rows here with numbers. I can choose to go view and then hide unused and unnamed note rows. And it will hide everything except for items that are named. And then from there, I can literally just take, I can click on here and just start dragging around. And then we have drums happening, which is drums are happening. Um, the only other thing that I'll mention is normally uh, when you are in the piano roll view, oh, this is what MIDI data, data normally looks like. 
right? Looks like these squares here, or rectangles. The thing is, you don't really need any length on your notes because they're just triggering samples. There's nothing to stop. They just start. So what you can do is actually go under view and choose to view piano roll notes as triangles. This is like my favorite thing so far about Reaper. It's so small, but having triangles here instead of notes makes so much more sense for, uh, for drums. You can then... Um, Put your cursor over here and you'll get this up and down arrow and you can drag you can get this awful terrible creepy noise that represents the different velocities you can also do that by dragging up and down in here you can for, for things that increase in volume you can drag diagonal lines and they'll just like change the velocity I mean it's just really nice I really like it um, so yeah, golly, so this is the worst drum beat I've ever put together. That is absolutely not true. Um, let's just do like a little thing here. Yeah, that's awesome. We're gonna do some hi-hat action. Yeah, hi-hats. If you hit a crash without a kick drum, you know that, you know, you'll get shot by somebody. Well, that's just... Great. Uh, I'm going to turn the velocities of all these up just to here. Okay. And then the other thing we'll do is you can, you can right-click and drag to select stuff, which is cool. So I'm just going to gr grab every other MIDI note real quick and change and bring the velocities of these down because to make the hi-hats a little more realistic which is just something you do okay done next song is done there you go that's it so there's a little preview on the piano roll view and that is basically what I do um, I will create sometimes I will create uh, MIDI events that are kind of in sequence, you know, like I'll, I'll do some here and then I'll do another one and then I'll do another one. But the, the way I end up working in the end is just gluing all those together. Uh, like I'll create a couple different things because this stuff might loop, whatever. I'll end up selecting them all, right clicking and then clicking glue items and that will just move everything together into a single track. Because in the end, you know, if you're looking for realism, they're all, even if something, the beat loops, you, you know, it's still going to be a little bit different uh, from measure to measure. So. There you go. I think that's pretty much it. Um, if I miss something, I'll be sure to comment on it or write about it. Um, real quick, I will just kind of show you what a final song looks like. This is the last Metroid Metal track that I did. Uh, the Brood. So you can kind of see what an entire session looks like. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, there you go. Here's a, here's a big daddy. Um, kind of what it looks like. I'm just going to kind of grab the drums here and the, my mastering plugins on, so I'll turn that off, but Okay, there's a little sample. Um, these are kicks and snares down here. This little dut 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 thing. This is the closed hi hat. This is just a bouncing foot, uh, again for realism. So, this is what an entire MIDI track may look like in the end. And you can see that the, the you know the, the velocities vary quite heavily. Um, and I can now fit all of my samples in RAM. So I'm taking advantage of that by using them all, trying to make the most realistic drums possible. Um, and that's kind of what it looks like. Um, so I guess that's about it. I, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, 30 minutes is a long time, but I wanted to cover a lot. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to send me a YouTube message. 
um, and I can I can answer anything I can. Uh, as far as getting access to my to note charts and battery presets and stuff like that's something I could certainly provide. Um, if you obviously have the same sample set that I do, uh, and you can get that from NaturalDrum.com, it's still available and it's still awesome. Um, it's missing a few s symbols. Kind of wish I had more symbols, but that's my and another set of toms. But that's my only complaint. It's got a lot of variety in there. So, um, yeah, I guess that's about it. So I'll just kind of leave this playing. I'm trying to think if there's anything I left out. Uh, I don't think there is. But uh, yeah. I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, new stuff coming soon. Talk to you guys later.